Good morning, and this is Off the Press, the newspaper review program, where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. We will dissect it for you as much as we can this morning and as much as time will allow us to do so. I have two guests. One is in the studio. The other is uh, remotely. She will be reviewing remotely. That is Aisha Osori, who will be joining us this morning from Germany. Good morning, Aisha. Yes. Good morning. All right, until she hears me, I also have still in the studio uh, Libros Oshoma, legal practitioner. I was tempted to say doctor, but well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being <laughs> All right, so we will be having two of them um, having this conversation with me this morning. We'll have a couple of papers to review this morning, but we will begin with the nation uh, newspaper already displayed. Interesting. All right, let's begin. It says 160 stranded Nigerians arrived from U.S. and they begin 14-day isolation. That story is on page five of the nation newspaper. Uh, Nigeria to receive Madagascar's COVID-19 cure drugs. That story is on page five. I'm waiting for Libra's reaction. Justice Olua Fortright, say uh, Buhari Tinubu Somolu Mons. That's on page five. All right. And then the big story for the nation newspaper, as you can see, uh, Madagascar's COVID-19 cure drugs sent to Nigeria. Now, knife dark others to carry out analysis before testing. Good news, at least. Governors seek volunteer health workers to battle the virus. And if you see the picture story there displayed, I believe it's the Nigerians who, were come, who came in yesterday uh, from the US. And we have the global figures uh, to the right of the newspaper. It says we are now at 4.1 million globally and 282,000 deaths recorded, and 1.4 million recoveries. That's not bad. And for Nigeria, we are now at 4,339, in case you didn't hear it, first in the morning, and 143 deaths, whereas we have 778 cases that have recovered. And the active cases stands at 3,474. You know, new cases as Saturday is 248. Uh, now we still have, you can see bullet, bullet points there. Lawmaker didn't die of virus. Edo screens 104,186 and traces 689. Police officer dies in Ogun. Abia orders closure of motor parks. Uh, Umahi suspends political aids. These and others you would find on page six and following of the nation newspaper. Now, Aisha, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, I was introducing you earlier and saying good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. Good morning, Amak, and good morning to the viewers and everyone at the studio. Yes, I have Libera Soshoma with me uh, uh, here also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've read out the headlines. We will now begin. Uh, Liberals, you heard the headlines. Um, just where do we begin this morning uh, yeah, from um, the nation newspaper? Um, um, cure. Cure. Sent to Nigeria. Yeah. Um, as, uh, Are you excited? No, no, no. Hmm. Uh, because um, if um, even though the World Health Organization had um, uh, cautioned Madagascar, in respect of that drug, but this did say Madagascar is responsible to their citizens and not to the World Health Organization. Then mm. I had expected that um, that drug should spur us to go into our research labs and, do our own. and uh, get our own. Try to, you know, um, I listened to your guest this morning, um, medical doctor, Dr. Wosu. Yes. And then who says uh, the, the problem, you know, most times with some of this research is that. You also have to domesticate your research, you know, because your your environment and your climate and um, you know the people, mm -hmm. how they respond to some of this treatment might differ, you know, depending on the country and depending on the climate. And so, I had expected that that would uh, you know enable us put on a thinking cap, go into the lab also if we have not started, and find them um, a way of researching. And then, but now we are receiving drugs from Madagascar. Mm -hmm. Fair as, it, as that may sound from a fellow African country, um, I also want, um, you know, Nav Navdak had said that, you know, they were going to test, test them. Test it first. Yes, and certify before. It, that, that for me should be, you know, the, 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 the standard procedure. The standard procedure. And the test should not just be, you know, the usual everyday run of the meal test. It should be, you know, you know, because if you fail and you miss it and then you start testing it on human beings, and uh, you know, so that you don't, um, 
you know, create another problem in trying to cure mm -hmm. one. All right, a Aisha. Yeah. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Isn't it almost a desperate cry for help if we are already uh, receiving Madagascar's uh, cure, so to say, uh, to be used here in Nigeria? What's your thought? Well, I think half and half. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't honestly ca categorize it as desperate. I would say that um, I do see value in exploring what remedies we can find locally. It seems like this virus is something that's really new for everybody, not just us in Africa, but also in the West. We keep hearing every day about how the symptoms and the way it, it portrays itself in different patients keeps changing. So for me, honestly, I don't really see any harm in experimenting. What for me I would like, obviously, is having the right medical protocols, making sure that not only did we get the drugs, but we got some sort of science around what Madagascar has done, some of the tests that they have carried out, why they're sure that it will work or why they're sure it has worked, um, so that we're not also reinventing the wheel. So while I would I like NAFTAC taking it taking a, a look at it, they should also be looking at the science behind what Madagascar has already done. They shouldn't be trying to reinvent the wheel because we also need a bit of speed in this. But the protocol should be clear, and those who are taking part in the trial should be sure of what they're doing and be volunteering freely to do that. So that, for me, is where it is. I don't think it's desperate. I think we should be exploring all options. I think we shouldn't wait for the West alone to find the cure. I believe that within Africa, we have the expertise and the material locally to be able to battle this thing as well. So let's also be contributing to the knowledge that's out there about how to cure COVID-19. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much for that intervention. I believe the paper will be put up again uh, before they do that, just for a reminder. Dibros, what's your thoughts on the stranded Nigerians who uh, came back? And were they stranded? It's not being yes, mean. Yes, they, they were. Okay. Yeah, because um, when your borders are closed and um, um, flights um, are not allowed in, what other responsible countries, you know, uh, did long before now mm -hmm. was to ensure that um, you know they timelessly evacuated their citizens uh, from these countries uh, right. because nobody actually you know expected it the way you know it happened here and and that I had expected that long before now we would have taken this step but better late than never it's um, it's, it's it's great it's fantastic and also I also like the fact that you know as they are coming in um, government should. Uh, you know, government had said that they were going to quarantine them, and they not just quarantine, they should be testing also. Mm -hmm. There should be appropriate testing of, you know, all, all of um, the returnees, because that's what, you, you know, uh, other countries are doing. You don't just quarantine. You hear that they quarantine them, mm -hmm. but they ensure that they, are, they carry out um, appropriate, you know, testing on them, so that you don't quarantine people, um, especially also since... Um, um, the symptoms are, uh, you know, varies yeah. on, on, from individuals. Some yeah. of them are symptomatic, and so you can, you know, after quarantine for 14 days, you can release them and only for them to get home and they find out that they have, uh, sure. you know, so that's why there's need for you to also carry out, you know, appropriate medical testing mm -hmm. on them, you, you know, apart from quarantine. Okay. It's, it's fantastic, you know. And then it's not just in, it shouldn't just be in America, it should also be extended to, you know, some of these other major European countries where we, you know, we have a lot. You know, we holidays a lot. I know, right? lot. <laughs> But, well, COVID-19 has kept everybody in those now, Yeah. So. All right, let's quickly move on to the next paper, which will be displayed. It will be the Punch newspaper. Households spent two trillion naira on fuel electricity in 2019. That's according to Nigerian, the Bureau of Statistics, MBS. And that story is on page 28. Now, federal government saved 361 billion naira from IPPIS despite opposition. Um, Federal government again warns VCs against reopening varsities. And then, why I am staying away from partisan politics, Jonathan is saying there on page 19. Uh, federal government warning the VCs against reopening of varsities. You find it, that on page 8. Now, the big story for the Punch newspaper home treatment will increase infections. NMA nurses warn. That's on page 2. Now, the World Health Organization opposes treatment in crowded homes. 
critical case won't be treated at home, according to the Lagos State Government. And the three patients positive, 14 Abuja doctors and nurses in isolation. Again, we have the picture stories there of returnees from uh, U.S. and federal government quarantines. 160 Nigerians evacuated from U.S. That story, you find it on page 28. How EFCC arrested me over 1,600 Naira. That's according to Benue Shawama Dila. Really? That story is on page four. Now, father and son defile Oshun teenager. Uh, the girl is pregnant. That's so unfortunate and wickedly. That story is on page four. A pizza side knocks Wiki over Rivers Hotel's demolition on page eight. And then we have certificate stand a scandal, rather. Uh, Riro demotes former director general. A woman dies in Lagos church during child uh, childbirth, rather, a prophetess arrested. Why won't people go to hospital, really? That story is on pages four and six. And lastly, FRSC intercepts struck with 13 Alma Jure in Ondo State on page seven. Liberos, where do we begin? What is catching your attention before uh, we I move think, to Aisha? Uh, um, you know, you can begin with Aisha. I okay. Had last say and then, uh... Okay. All right, Aisha, c can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Uh, I've read out the headlines, and I'm wondering which one is catching your attention. Well, the one with the demolition, because that's the demolition of Wiki, the hotel in, um, in Rivers, because it's tied to, obviously, the response of state and federal government to COVID-19. So it sort of captures two stories at once. Mm -hmm. We're seeing an alarming increase in some sort of, some sort of authoritarian strain in many governors around Nigeria right now, all in the name of COVID-19. And actually, it's a bit alarming. It's something that we would hope that the federal government and the attorney general will step in immediately mm -hmm. and do something about. Maybe there's need for a meeting of all governors right now, but we honestly, this story about wicked demolishing things, seizing people's cars, threatening to chop off people's legs, all on the basis of executive orders. And we already have a case in Lagos State from 2016, I think Faith versus Okafo and the Lagos State, where they tried to prosecute her for not obeying environmental laws. And it was clear from that case, from the Court of Appeals judgment, that executive orders are not laws. So what WK is doing is highly illegal and actually needs to be nipped in the bud. We're seeing a lot of state governors from Kogi State to uh, in uh, Bello to Udom in, in Akwaibom. Something needs to be done. In the name of fighting COVID-19, we cannot be taking away people's human rights and impoverishing people even more. I can't even imagine what heartache will be going through. Despite whatever they did to flaunt his orders, the response should not have been to knock down the entire hotel. I mean, I just can't even understand it. This is a time where people are going through economic depression. This is a time where even Nigeria is struggling for money and we're busy spending time and resources knocking down buildings. So for me, I'm very concerned. Right. I, I, I'm sure liberals will agree with you completely because we had this conversation in the earlier segment. And if you recall also, the United Nations have warned that, you know, uh, leaders need to be very careful during this time not to trample on the rights of citizens during this time, all in the name of, you know, trying to curtail and uh, combat COVID-19. I'll come to liberals now who's in studio with the next yeah, story. Yeah, um, I, I will take, um, I'll try and um, see if I can address also a hydra uh, you know, issue mm -hmm. well, um, one Nigerian spends two trillion on fuel and electricity yeah. um, that's according to the Bureau of Public um, uh, yes, Bureau statistics. Of statistics and then you, you know it's it's sad uh, that government knows that we're spending this much on fuel because of lack of availability of electricity and and so imagine mm -hmm. you, if you if you go deep down you see the statistics mm -hmm. of uh, what went for consumption of fear for generators at home and then what went for electricity and people would have gladly paid for electricity if it were available we're not even talking of how much people had spent for data mm -hmm. for online meetings online classes and you know all of that and, and so i also think this would have been an opportunity for government to begin to think inward look inward and say you know these are problems that we actually need to fix and harness resources from there and then lastly i also want to talk about um, the home treatment will increase um, infections. infection um, yes yes <laughs> and, and so because the government seems to be overwhelmed and in some cases you know they had resorted to you, you remember when this 
pandemic first started in Nigeria, government started advising people, rather than quarantine the people, mm -hmm. they advise people to self-quarantine. And, and it is a practical impossibility in Nigeria to self-quarantine when, you know, nobody's watching you. And no, that same government that didn't have facility to quarantine people now is quarantining people, mm. are returnees. So that means if we had done what we needed to do at the right time, we would have gotten to where we are today. And so that same government, you know, did say because of lack of uh, facilities, you know, some persons were encouraged to do home treatment, you know, depending on the severity of the, of the, of the, uh, yes. uh, the cases. And, and so now we're gradu gradually realizing that home treatment will increase infection mm -hmm. because a man who lives in face by face you with uh, five children and a wife, that's seven, and then he is um, uh, uh, he has the disease, and you ask him to because you know he's um, he's the, he's not in a critical condition. You ask him to engage in home, tre home treatment. You you're definitely going to look for trouble. Sure. You know, and so and that's why we should also increase our testing capacity. Last week here we talked about availability of information. Mm. It is not enough to just drop this in the papers or issue a press release for this. I think government should you know run with such information to ensure also that people are aware and it will also serve as an opportunity to let them know that you know for the fact that you test positive to COVID-19 is not a death sentence mm -hmm. because that's why some persons are resort resorting to home treatment and herbal uh, uh, treatment. Herbal you. All right before we go to the uh, next paper let's move on to Aisha. Aisha what's your thoughts on this? Well I, I agree with the um, liberals about the treatment part, about the home treatment dangers. And of course, when we know that we live in, we're a very communal society where very rarely do people live alone. Very rarely do you find maybe only two people living in a, in a, in a, in a, in a place. So yes, the likelihood of home treatment is going to increase the infection. However, I would say that it would be, it would be fair if the government tried to treat each case um, by itself in isolation. Uh, we've seen at least on uh, television, CNN, those of us who are privileged enough to, to watch what's going on in other parts of the world, that in many cases, because the hospitals are so overwhelmed, yes, you don't want mild cases of, of coronavirus rushing to the hospital or rush, rushing to isolation centers. So for people who can stay and self-isolate and treat at home, I think they should just be given the right protocols. We saw the journalist on CNN, Kumo, who stayed at home and shared with us what his therapies were. So this is the same thing we should be doing. We, we, we know that our healthcare system cannot cope with a, an exponential growth in this infection. So for me, it's a half and half thing. Where we see that people, because of their living conditions, should not treat at home because the rate of infection will spread in their environment, then isolate them. But if there are people who are privileged enough to live in spaces where they can self-isolate and treat, then make sure they have the right protocols to treat themselves and stay there instead of overburdening the hospitals. So it's a half and half thing. I would say I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm there. Mm. All right, let's move on to the next paper, which is this day newspaper already displayed. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, uh, that would be great. But well, before this is adjusted, uh, before we continue with this day, in the, the previous paper, which is the punch, uh, it also mentioned there's a story there that I, I thought we should take a look at, which is the federal government warning universities not to open. Are you not worried, especially that if you're saying don't open the, the universities, why are we not engaging in online studies already? There are people who are not in school waiting until this is over. Yeah, last time I talked about um, you know, the private schools, the private um, secondary schools and private primary schools engaging in, um, in an online um, studies. And um, as I speak to you now, my kids probably would have started you know, classes mm -hmm. for this morning. But then the question you should ask is, how about those kids in Ekakbamre, yeah. in Eromukokware, you know, in Arugungu, in Amuvi, you know, all those children in public, you know, primary and secondary schools, mm -hmm. tucked away in some of these villages who have never even seen a laptop before. Yeah, the government said they are going to, I mean, So Lagos what is the government doing? Radio. I know Lagos State government is organizing um, radio classes. How effective? You know, how effective. I know a lot of people follow up, you know, but also for me, government should find a way of ensuring that these people are not just, you know, left hanging. It's a new world order. People are beginning to embrace and encourage online platforms, online teaching, online lectures. Our universities also, you know, we're not talking about take up our university. Anybody who is in the university 
pass through you know what you call um, um, a, a, a jam testing also mm -hmm. and most of the jam uh, examination these days are online based so i see no reason why the universities also cannot you know start on, on online teaching if mm -hmm. properly you know um, implemented and uh, if the facilities are properly in place all right all right let's take our last paper this day uh, it says for the, this day newspaper, uh, CBN assesses funding requests for Nigerian made COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, global stock markets lose $18 trillion to pandemic, according to report on page 5. 248 new cases bring tally to 4,399, with 778 discharged, 143 unfortunately dead. The federal government increases testing laboratories to 23. Kakovit pledges more support for PPE producers. Lagos, um, FCT, Borno Kano discharges 82 more patients. Rivers demolishes two hotels for flouting restrictions. Order. NGC approves online sitting of courts nationwide. Uh, Libras is going to tell us about that in a bit. Uh, federal government to set up panel on implementation of Oron Sae report. There will be no job losses, says Ngege. Hopefully. Uh, then we have a picture story of those who are monitoring the lockdown or mark stop. All right, let's begin with you, uh, Libras. Uh, what's your thoughts on beginning the hearing? Judicial hearing. Yeah, it's um, as good as it is with um, the uh, Supreme Court judgment in uh, um, Ojuzo case. I think um, mm. this is the time for, you know, if need be, uh, the practice direction to be amended to accommodate this online hearing because in some cases it is stated in the rules, it is clear that judgment shall be delivered in open court. Mm -hmm. And a situation where an accused person is condemned and then judgment is delivered online. online and the lawyer goes to court of appeal to challenge the judgment that you it know the judgment was not delivered in open court and with the narrow-minded interpretation of our supreme court judges these days you know the all the efforts of um, of of the prosecution might just be thrown to the dustbin and the case remitted back to the trial court, mm. you know. So we want to avoid situations where we would get upstairs and you use technicalities to defeat the end of justice, even though at the trial there was no miscarriage of justice. So mm. that's why it's not enough to just, you know, approve it. We need to also amend some of these laws to ensure that it's accommodated. That's just my worries. All right, unfortunately, that's all we were able to take laborers. And Aisha over there, Thank you, Aisha. Unfortunately, we are going to wrap it here now. I hope you keep safe where you are. Thank you. Keep safe too. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so very much, Liberos Oshoma, for being with me. I believe you'll still be with me in the next segment. This is where we call it a wrap for this program of the press. We do this, remember, Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa, where we take a look at the newspaper and make sense of it. Please stay safe out there. I am Amaka Okoye. <laughs>